In this video, we will discuss the size behind Joseph de Tourie's age reversal. He lived in a compact 100 square foot pod at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean for 93 days and came back to the surface 10 years younger. We're talking about his biological age. If you don't know who Joe de Tourie is, he is a 55 year old American biomedical researcher and a former naval commander. Medical assessments revealed that the Turi's telomeres had lengthened by 20% and his stem cell count had increased tenfold. Have you ever wondered how that's even possible? Let's deep dive right into it. Did you know that there is an underwater lodge in Key Largo, Florida? Right off the bat, one thing is obvious, that these transformations were attributed to the underwater pressure. So I visited the website of Jules Undersea Lodge, where de Tourie had spent three months in a 100 square foot lab. And this lab is 30 feet below the ocean surface. So when we descend beneath the surface of the sea, we are subjected to tremendous pressure increases. To keep the thorax from collapsing, air must be supplied under high pressure. And you're about to find out how much pressure we are talking about. At sea level, the atmosphere puts 180 a pressure, one absolute pressure, or that, that's equal to 1.013 bar pressure on us. And a vertical column of seawater 33 feet high also puts the same amount of pressure, which is 180 a. Therefore, a person 33 feet beneath the surface of the sea is exposed to a total of 280A pressure. 180A caused by the weight of the water and uh, the other 80A by the air above the uh, sea surface. So air is supplied at a pressure which is two times higher than the normal air pressure. This type of treatment is called hyperbaric oxygen therapy or HBOT. It utilizes 100% oxygen in an environmental pressure higher than 180A to enhance the amount of oxygen dissolved in the body's tissue. As per Henry's law of solubility of gases, as the gas pressure increases, the solubility of gas in the liquid also increases. Hence, at 280A hyperbaric conditions, we are actually ensuring more oxygen is getting dissolved in the blood the oxygen then enters the tissues and then into the cells and finally into the mitochondria via diffusion. And before we proceed further, it is important to understand the process of aging. There are two major factors. The first factor is oxidative stress, which can occur from imbalance between production of reactive oxygen species, ROS, and cellular scavengers or antioxidants. When mitochondria is dealing with the transfer of unpaired electrons, it may produce reactive oxygen species such as superoxide ion and subsequently hydrogen peroxide as side products. The ROS, the reactive oxygen species, are chemically very active and can cause oxidative damage to cellular components such as uh, proteins, lipids and DNA leading to cellular dysfunction and contributing to the aging process. But we have scavengers too, such as glutathione synthase and superoxide dismutase, SOD enzymes. So they scavenge the reactive oxygen species. So this ratio of ROS by scavengers or antioxidants is important. The, the ratio should be low. See, this is why anyone who is doing a lot of physical workouts should take antioxidants. The second factor behind aging is shortening of telomeres. A telomere is a simple DNA sequence that is repeated many times, like GC, 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 guanine, cytosine, guanine, cytosine, repeated many times, located at the tip of each chromosome. Telomeres are not genes. They are needed for proper duplication of the chromosome in dividing cells, so they provide stability. Each time the chromosomes are duplicated, the telomeres shrink a little bit until they get so short that the DNA replication machinery, DNA polymerase, can no longer work. So when this happens, 
the cell is said to have reached replicative senescence, meaning loss of cell's power of division and growth. Joseph de Turi was subjected to hyperbaric 100% oxygen. Don't you think that high levels of oxygen would cause even more oxidative damage and aging? And on top of that, Joseph Duturi is already 55 years old, so his natural antioxidant levels in the body have decreased with age. Then how can we expect 100% oxygen at two times higher pressure to do any good to his body? Let's understand this. It is often inappropriately assumed that the rates of aging and oxygen levels are directly proportional. It is not correct. The biological consequences of aging with respect to oxygen levels are actually much more complex. Let me draw this. This is the normal level of oxygen, normoxia. Lower level of oxygen, hypoxia, which is hazardous. At this level, it creates oxidative stress. This is a higher level of oxygen, hyperoxia. This is also hazardous. At this level here, it creates oxidative stress as well. Both extreme high and low atmospheric oxygen levels lead to increased oxidative stress and reduced longevity. To the contrary, modest modulation of oxygen levels here in this range and in this range can enhance the antioxidant defenses and slow the aging process. Now you might be thinking, why not choose hypoxic conditions in this healthy range instead of hyperoxia? The answer is, almost all of the cell's functions are energy dependent and cannot be accomplished in a hypoxic environment. Since oxygen is required for proper functioning, we will go in this direction towards hyperoxia in this safe zone. Now get ready for a mind-bending twist. Even in the hyperbaric, hyperoxic safe zone, there are two major drawbacks. The first drawback is telomeres are highly sensitive to oxidative DNA damage, which can induce telomere shortening and dysfunction. But then how did the Turi's telomeres lengthen by 20% after spending 93 days at the bottom of the Atlantic? We'll answer that question. The second drawback is the low levels of oxygen, not high levels of oxygen. Please pay attention. Low levels of oxygen or hypoxia induces stem cell proliferation, migration and differentiation. Then how did Joseph de Turi's stem cell count increase to tenfold? Was he subjected to hypoxic or low oxygen levels or hyperoxia? But then I just told you that we don't want to choose hypoxia because almost all of the cell's functions are energy dependent and cannot be accomplished in a hypoxic environment. Hence, we will go in this direction towards hyperoxia in, in the safe zone. So scientists address these issues by using repeated intermittent hyperoxia to stimulate tissue regeneration without the hazardous effect of hypoxia. This is termed the hyperoxic hypoxic paradox. HHP. Turning on hyperoxia for one to two hours and then turning it off. It fools the cells. The cells interpret it as a lack of oxygen. Thus, repeated intermittent hyperoxia can induce many mediators such as HIF1. HIF is hypoxia inducible factor. And VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor that, that that are usually induced during hypoxia. So this is how intermittent hyperoxia can induce stem cell proliferation, migration and differentiation. This is what led to 10 times higher stem cell count in Detroit. Now one last thing we need to answer is telomere shortening. So telomeres are highly sensitive to oxidative DNA damage, which can induce telomere shortening and dysfunction. Repeated intermittent hyperoxia increases the levels of antioxidants and ROS scavengers such as glutathione synthase and superoxide dismutase enzymes. So when hyperoxia is turned on, the levels of the uh, ROS and the scavengers increase naturally. But when hyperoxia is turned off, 
the cells get back to normoxia and the ROS do not last very long because of their low uh, half-life. So hydroxyl uh, ion has a half-life of 10 to the power of minus 9 seconds. Uh, and uh, uh, the half-life of uh, uh, superoxide ion is 1 to 15 minutes. So they get scavenged. So when the cells get back to normoxia, the cells uh, interpret this as lack of oxygen and they induce all the uh, HIF and all the other uh, mediators and uh, processes that happen during hypoxia. And due to this concerted effort, the rate at which telomeres get shortened reduces. Due to lack of time, I won't be able to go over foods that slow down the aging process, but I've given some idea of how Joseph Dutuuri reverses biological age by 10 years. Please comment if you liked the video or if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.